So we're going to check in with Dash and Zyrene at the analyst desk. Thank you very much, guys. Cloud9 Challenger making it into the LCS. No longer Cloud9 Challenger. Now they're Cloud9 LCS or going to be a different brand. Yeah. Uh, and we can get to that later. But a 3-0 sweep over energy here. Uh, this was the most competitive of the three games. Uh, and we did, if we take a look at Champ Select, find uh, finally kind of that uh, that answer from Energy about what they're going to throw into the top lane to be effective. It's the Alawi along with a lot of attention towards that lane. Yeah, the Alawi got that first blood, but I feel like it was definitely shut down by high roaming and making sure that it, that lane was once again even. So mm -hmm. it was a good pick. I still don't like it into the Janna. I think the Janna will shut that down almost every time. The team fights, you just press the R, and then Alawi, once, if she had already used her ultimate, is just forced out. She's like pure definition of a juggernaut. <laughs> right. Pushed out of the fights. Yeah, exactly. She Yes, at this point, she's running to get back into it. It's too late. We saw, we did see her effectiveness when she could get a couple hits off with her oh, ultimate yeah. in a few fights. But yeah, definitely uh, was obviously wasn't successful enough to change the game. We saw the Ari come out from uh, GBM. Of course, this was blind picked. Uh, and so high opting into that LeBlanc once again in response and uh, still showing his prowess on that champion that he's been playing yeah. since his days in the LCS <laughs> quite well. So Yeah, it's one of those champions that, you know, his wrists are, you know, hurting a little bit and every time he plays it he's like i still got it though <laughs> yeah i still got it. i still play this champion and that's a matchup that's really skill based because the ari will can throw the charm out when you as soon as you use the Dash distortion yeah. and will interrupt the damage from it and can outplay you so he got the better of that matchup versus gpm gbm and got like a 30 cs advantage very early on mm -hmm. kept roaming made sure that gbm couldn't stay in his lane and then the rest of the team composition just came together hecarim shen is deliver him every oh, time a sivir speeded Ooh. hecarim uh, in, with a Shen, with a Shen submarine on top of it. It's just absolutely gross team yeah. fight in game. That's why the Shen was banned like every time, and they gave both away. Yeah, but Contracts, once again, hopping back onto that, got a very early Triforce, so a lot of power sitting on him. He played quite well uh, across the entire series, yeah. and, but in particular in this game where uh, I would say High played incredibly well in games one and two, uh, and, and, and maybe dropped off, took a step back in game three, Contracts covered for him. Yeah, well, the thing is, is he was able, High roamed to other lanes and was like, all right, GBM, I'll see you later. I got to go help this Alawi not, like, take over this game, help Machen out a little bit, mm -hmm. did that. So he did play damage control, whereas Contracts was more playing uh, damage in mm -hmm. the back line. So uncontrollable. All right, well, before we come back to the desk and look at some replays from that game, Azale is all set for his interview. So let's head to stage where he is waiting in the wings with C9's mid laner. Thanks, guys. I'm here with High, and I got to say, man, congratulations, three to zero. Uh, incredible series there against Energy, and you know, preparing for this series, were, were you guys expecting it to be so clean? Well, you shouldn't go into any match thinking you're gonna throw anybody. I think that's kind of a bad mindset, but we went into confident, thinking that we are a good team, and I think we showed that. Yeah, you guys definitely show that, and I've got to say some some very marked improvement from the Challenger Finals. You know, have you guys really been preparing a lot for this and practicing hard? Yeah, I think in the Challenger Finals, I had some issues with what I wanted to pick into mid. So like a few of the games, I didn't do that well. But this series, I had a really good pool of what I wanted to do versus him. And I think we countered them really well and played well. Yeah, yeah, you in particular, I think, uh, played incredibly well on the LeBlanc. You know, kind of your classic style, able to win lane and then roam for the team, you know, sacrificing for the team, uh, playing very, very well. And, and that has to feel good. And I'm sure a lot of fans are wondering, are we going to see you playing again in the LCS? Are you going to stick with this, with this challenger squad? Well, I don't think I'm going to. I feel kind of old, you know. My wrist kind of hurt. My back kind of hurts. And uh, I've played a lot already. Yep. But for my teammates, I'm pretty sure all four of them want to continue playing. And I think they want to play on a team together. So maybe you'll see those four with someone else. But I I'm getting old, man. What's next for High then? What what's the next step for you? Well, no idea. Well, I have some ideas, but we'll keep that on the download for now. But yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, congratulations. Incredible win and incredible performance. If it's the last we get to see of you in the LCS, it's definitely going to be a shame. But best of luck to you and whatever comes next. And that's going to be it for us, guys. Let's send it back to Dash at the Desk. Thank you very much, uh, both Azale and High. It's great to see High back on the stage, if only for a moment. Of course, he's uh, playing with our emotions, not letting us know what he's going to be up to next. 
so I have no idea how to follow him through yeah. the rest of his career. I, hi, uh, it's so mean of him. It makes the team <laughs> depend on him. Like he got that that shot calling in there. He's like, all right, you guys, right. go from here. He's like, you didn't even teach us how to fly. Yeah, whoa. Like, they're hey, leaving buddy. the they're leaving the nest, and he was carrying them the whole time. <laughs> Either way, wish him the best yes. in whatever his next endeavor is. Let's dive now back into this series uh, and break down this third game. As we mentioned, we've got a couple replays that we want to work through. The first one coming at 21:30 into the game. This is a two for zero in the mid lane. Yeah, contracts dive in to try and start it off and just a very smooth combo onto GBN there. They continue to chase him down and eventually pick him up, but then Quas gets caught with a tornado for elimination. And then there's the ultimate again. Like elimination is just using the ultimate to make sure that Quas doesn't get good combos off. It wasn't even that effective there, but it still just made sure that Quas doesn't get HP back, yep. doesn't get double use off, doesn't get to reset it. And then balls TPs to the top side of the map to catch that gigantic minion. Save that wave. turret, catch a big wave. We like to see that. This is a very extended replay here. <laughs> there it is, another kill picked up. It's actually, actually, so I guess it was a three for zero. I <laughs> forgot about that third yeah. kill it's coming like, in at the end. It's actually good that uh, Contracts got knocked up there because he would have clopped through him, probably in turret range, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and maybe got maybe got a turret shot there. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. So yeah, maybe uh, aided a little bit in the, in the fact that uh, Karma died before he got that off. Three for zero, four cloud nine there. That's going to give them a little bit of control over the game. As we mentioned, though, this was a very close one, and we did see many times around the Baron pit, for example, and this is what I want to take a look at. 34-30 into the game. Four kills for C9 here around the Baron in a very extended dance. Yeah, and this is what GBM's composition wants to do, or energy composition position is they want to have them uh, in a great spot right there. And Lemonation, with the ultimate, pushes Quas back afterwards. The Alawi wants you to engage on her and then yep. pop the ultimate like that. And then Lemonation just resets the fight. Alawi no longer has that ultimate, no longer has that ability to just decimate a team fight. And then the poke magic damage comes through. They're just going back and forth. And now, contract. Beautiful. I'm going in, boys. Beautiful. Dives the back line. Earliest smite I have ever I seen. I don't know if he was so... trying to smite the Baron or if that was supposed <laughs> to be on Santorin. It was a very strange Probably smite when it came the, out. Probably on the uh, guy. Yeah, either way, earliest smite ever, but a very smart decision by contracts here to come and disrupt backs as well as happen to pick up two kills here. Yeah, he, so super advantageous. He was like just kind of trekking through the forest with his uh, sweeper on, and then he had his W on as well, which mm -hmm. was just checking for people, and it interrupted the Baron recall from Kiwi Kid on one of the ticks, and then Oki was just there, so. I think one of the most underappreciated things in League of Legends is that upgraded red trinket to track people and find people when you're moving through jungles or yeah. spaces that you don't have vision of. He uses it brilliantly there, picks up two kills, removes two more Barons from the map. Now energy, even having secured the Baron, only has one. It's not gonna be enough for them to mount a defense. So they go ahead and walk away with the game. Cloud9 Challenger is our next team into the LCS. Now we had a lot of good performances today, but one player stood above the rest to earn our player of the series mentioned, and that is going to go to High. High had some insane games on LeBlanc and led his squad through this, well, five game series, but three game <laughs> trouncing of the opponents. Yeah, he had some great games all the way through. It was very close between him and Contracts because everybody was just firing on all cylinders today. And High's dives showing that he's still got it for the Assassins. He's still got it for the control mages like Morgana. And he's also got those other champions up his sleeve. Very versatile player and also a big leader for the team. So it's a shame if he doesn't stick around, but he definitely deserves player of the series for this one. Now, so here's the thing. We have to mention the fact that Contracts did play fantastically yep. during the series. As player of the series is going to high, just wanted to give a nod to him because through all three games had quite a performance, but especially in game three, did step up and show that he, among the newer players, the non-LCS uh, veterans, does belong yeah. in the LCS. The 17-year-old kid who... Wasn't able to play last time that his team had qualified for the Challenger playoffs, but now, you know, he's showing up. I want to see what he can do in the LCS. All right, well, that's going to clear it up for us here on NALCS 1 and the series between Cloud9, Challenger, and Energy. We're going to now throw you over to NALCS 2, where Phoenix 1 is looking to close out a series in three games against Echo 5.